Welcome back to the Grow Your Business series. It's Emily Heyer here with Mallory Vaillant. Kim is not joining us this week, but we have a really cool topic to talk about today. We're going to talk about the top three limiting beliefs in new coaches so that we can see them and transform them. So we want to talk about that today. Why don't you t- start with the first top belief that you see in our clients? Yes. We've actually been hearing quite a lot of these recently because when we start taking the first step or the next step, or we see that, you know, we need to pivot or change something, the next, like the commitment to taking this step is what is the catalyst to bring up all the reasons that your mind tells you you shouldn't or you can't. And that's where those limiting beliefs come up because that's what's going to stop you from taking the action moving forward. And we have Belief Boot Camp coming up. We have the online version and the in person version in Austin, Texas. That's what's bringing all this up. So we're seeing it happen in our business in eSchool. We're seeing it happen for our clients. We're seeing it happen for ourselves as we pivot and change some things in the way that we're doing it. And so it's perfect time to talk about it because you can't let, you can't let things stop you from moving forward when you're in business. And yet business is the catalyst to clean those things up. So one of the most common ones that we see and something that we've talked about recently is the fear of putting yourself out there on social media and not wanting to be seen and being afraid to be seen and what, where does that even come from? So it could come from a lot of different places, but the problem is whenever you go to press the button, like you go to say, go live on Facebook, or you go to put your own picture out on an Instagram post, or you go to make a reel on Instagram and you're afraid to show your face, you have this hesitancy. So Emily, what would you say is one of the biggest reasons that people freeze up right there? I know for me personally, in my experience of promoting myself or sharing my life, um, if I haven't fully accepted all the parts of myself, I start to think of all the people that might see it and how this person has these beliefs and this person has these beliefs. And if I show my true self, then somebody's going to be disappointed in me. Someone is going to have an opinion. They're going to think I'm too much. They're going to think I'm boring. They're going to think I'm not smart enough. I, I make up all these stories in my head and then I'll freeze or go back and edit the post and make it different than what I originally wanted or change the picture or try to hide a certain part of my life because I'm wanting to Be paint a picture way. of what I think everyone will accept. And then what happens with that is it ends up being flat and boring because it's just generic. It's not specific to what I was actually aiming to do in the business. So really the the belief comes down to what I wrote down was they're going to think I'm blank and it's just the flavor of the, the day, whatever you're feeling in that moment, that's what comes up. And it really does hold us back from sharing our life and our business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have my own flavor of what this means. (laughs) Another thing is that I think um, in like a certain generation of people, there is a belief that we were taught growing up that it's not safe or it's not kind of you to want the attention. Mm-hmm. that's not that has wasn't my experience exactly but so my experience for myself personally is that it's self-judgment of my own appearance and the way my house looks and the way my like everything looks because if I'm presenting myself as this person who can help you do this thing online I need to look like that all the time and if I don't look like that then it means it's not real. Yep. And it's like this huge, like imposter syndrome that comes up and it's all from just self-judgment. And 
it's even like some days if I'm having a bad hair day or how, like whatever it is, like there's a, there's still a voice in my head that when I go to make even just a story on Instagram that like, if I don't look presentable, I shouldn't be doing it. And what is presentable? Exactly. You know, like we have to actually break down the words that we use. Yes. Because I grew up with that too. Like you don't invite a friend over unless your house is presentable. That was the word all the time. Mm -hmm. And so they're from childhood. It's like, you better clean up your act. You better clean up your appearance, shove your clutter in different places. So no one can see it before anyone comes over, like hide parts of you before someone can see it and judge you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And totally. it doesn't even matter that other people will tell me, oh, your pictures are so beautiful or, oh, you look so great. It does not matter because my mind doesn't believe it. So yeah. if my, if I'm judging myself, it doesn't matter what anyone else says, right? Unless they're agreeing with the thought that I have about myself, then my mind's going to be like, see proof. Well, and we that don't is just like the it. Belief. We might hear the words, but it's like, want, 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 because we're only looking for the matching beliefs. So we might see like 20 comments that are like, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, but we're only finding, we're only seeing the hundred other people that didn't comment. And we're like, why didn't they comment on my post? And, and so you, so you believe this thing, this, yeah. this limiting belief that's it's actually a lie usually if it's holding you back it's probably a lie so you're believing this and then your brain's going out looking for evidence to prove that to be true and then automatically then it's like freeze stop can't move forward can't can't go to the next step can't go live can't tell people what you do business fails right and well what we know from mindset coaching is that there's never just, why well, just freeze and don't do anything. It's there's like some action that's happening. And that's what we get into when we're starting to dismantle the, these beliefs is like, if I, if I freeze and I don't put myself forward on social media or, or go to the networking event or shake hands with someone, if I'm hiding a part of myself, because I'm believing these thoughts, there's probably some action tied to that, that is what's actually holding you back. So take, for instance, the belief that I need to be thinner to take my pictures, my branding. This happened, this happens with all of our clients, right? Like, mm -hmm. Especially yeah. I know yeah. for me, I'm, like, I'm going to lose lost. the weight first yes. and then I'm going to take the pictures. Or we schedule the, we schedule the event or the, the shoot for three months later. And we're like, all right, I got three months. I better get this done. And when we're not like putting ourselves out there as we are now, that creates this tension and pressure of like not accepting ourselves. And then we have to look at what is that feeling actually creating? Is it creating eating healthier and like going through your, the actions for your goals to actually lose weight for the photo shoot? Or are you eating at night because you feel like crap about yourself in general? And that's that's your excuse. And then you're creating the problem that you're wanting to solve over and over again. So we like, we see these personal issues blending with business issues. It's not that it's social media doesn't work or whatever. It's like, you're actually holding yourself back because of these underlying beliefs about yourself that are coming from your childhood yep. or your corporate work. There, you know, I know coming from my perspective, like, I don't want to post this thing about mindset coaching because this scientist I used to work at at this other company thinks it's bogus. So I'm not going to serve all of these people that need my help because this one guy is in my head about the comments he made at my job one time. Like, it's <laughs> so silly, but that's what it really comes down to. I'm like, oh, that guy's going to, think I'm woo woo. <laughs> like, that's it. That's what it comes down to. Like that one person you have in your mind that yeah. you think is judging you. And he probably doesn't follow me anymore. Like it doesn't even matter. So why do we hold, why do we let those things hold us back? That's what we really need to uncover. Yep. Exactly. All right. So that brings us to the number two 
limiting belief that we see in new coaches. What was the next one that you wrote down? <laughs> uh, this isn't working. Mm, that's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one for me too. So in the past year, I've worked on that a lot, a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot, because it is so crazy. It's such a self-fulfilling prophecy because when you see one thing that's not working and then you laser focus on that, like, why is it not working? What's happening? What's, what do I need to change? What do I need to fix? Instead of being the problem solver and the solution to whatever is not working, you're laser focused on the thing that's not working. And those two energies oppose each other. So right. you creating more of things not working. Again, it's, and it's a lot of times that you like, can see. Yeah. And a lot of times it's like looking at the wrong thing, even like one thing is not working. Like no one commented on my Facebook post, but yet I have these clients that I'm serving right here. Like, and then your brain's going to focus on that and create more of people not commenting. And it doesn't even matter because it's not the thing that moves the needle forward in the business. It's a vanity metric. Right. Yeah. We think people commenting and liking our social media is as if we went up to someone and said, Hey, hi. And they're just like, like, that's not the actual interaction. Maybe they literally didn't see the post mm -hmm. or maybe it wasn't captivating and it, they're just like, all right. And they just scroll on by, like, it's not personal to you. It's maybe you need to change something up. It's not that it's not working. It's a, a myriad of things could be happening, but you think it's not working because of this formula you have in your mind. This plus this has to equal this. And that's just not how life goes. Like that's not how the magic works. So in eSchool, we teach how to create an email opt-in or a lead generator and people will go through the whole process and put all of this together and no one signs up for it but then people contact them behind the behind the scenes and sign up for their actual program that they're wanting to sell but they think the it's not working because yeah. no one came to their free webinar and so they're like it's not working and we're like you made $5000 <laughs> it's working <laughs> it's totally working it's totally like doing what it meant in. to do yeah mm -hmm. they're locked into that particular formula did not work yeah but that's just not the magic of life it right never really works out how we want it to <laughs> or we how we imagine it should or even like for me like from my experience I've seen times whenever I was kind of stuck in that mindset or, or stuck in that, like gathering the evidence of things not working. And like, we had things going on, we had webinars or we had, uh, like, I don't know if it was a, another belief boot camp or a business lift off challenge that we were doing. And so I had set up all the tech to make that work. And then if one thing didn't work and I had to go back and fix it, and then contact the people that it didn't work for, you know, fix it. But if I like, so it totally depends on where I let my mind go with that, because it's so easy to go down the rabbit hole of all the ways that it didn't work. And then when I focus on all the ways that it didn't work, another thing doesn't work. And then I got to go fix that. And then another thing doesn't work. And then my mind's like, oh my God, this is totally ruined. I just like screwed the whole launch up and all these people are going to be so mad or they're not going to get their, their things. And like everything that I just, we just put together and all the effort and the energy that we, that we put out into the world to help these people is not working. And then that I'm going to get fired and lose my job and then I will die. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. Who was I to even think that I could do this? Oh my gosh. All that. It's like so much that it was a lot comes up. <laughs> yeah. Same here. Like if, a client um, doesn't get the thing that I wanted them to get and, you know, uh, a series of images or I missed something, I can easily let my mind go to see, you shouldn't have ever thought that you could ever do, like, what were you thinking? But it, it really can be as simple as, okay, 
fix the issue, move along. Like it can really just be so neutral. Yeah. But we think this isn't working. Like I, I let my myself go through that with our house transition and moving here. Like seem like everything that could go wrong was going wrong. And so I kept in that momentum and my gosh, that's all I could see. And I had to get, I had to snap out of it. And then I could see the blessing of the home and what we're creating. And it really does take the shift of what is working. What can I do in this moment to create solutions? I am the solution. Like it really does take that shift because it can take you into a major spin. Yeah. Well, on the flip side of that, when I'm managing my mind (laughs) and (laughs) something comes up and someone sends me an email and says, Hey, I didn't get the link for this. Like something didn't work and I didn't get the, or whatever it is when I'm there and it's neutral. Oh, okay. Well, here's this. And I'm going to go and tweak this. And then everything else flows behind it. And people are like, oh my God, this was so cool. How this, how you made this happen. And it like, that's the flip side of it. No. Such Again, a simple it's like, little you have, you're not hearing the hundred people that really love what you do. You're only seeing the one person who's like, this isn't working for me. Yeah. And we're like, <laughs> oh my God, this isn't working. Yeah. And then we have all these other success stories or compliments or things that they're just they're literally like either not telling us or we can't even receive it because it's not there. Mm-hmm. We're not looking at it. Yeah. Yep. That's a good one. Okay. The other one I wrote down was I'm not qualified enough. Okay. I need more credentials. I am missing something. I need to learn more. I don't know enough. I don't know enough. Which means... I'm not enough right, to help this person. So that's right. a big one that you, that it's very clear can like influence every other part of your life. Cause how you do anything is how you do everything. So if it's a belief that you have, I'm not enough. Mine used mine for a long time was I'm not good enough. I'm not a good enough photographer. I'm not a good enough physical therapist. I'm not a good enough coach. So it didn't matter which group of people I was talking to. I was never good enough. And that played out for a very long time until I shifted it. Right. I wrote a post the other day and I'm sure this concept actually just came from Kim. (laughs) The thought came to me and I was like, oh, that's good. I was like, if you're feeling imposter syndrome, you either need to sharpen your skills or sharpen your mindset. Yeah. So if I were coaching you on this, I'm not good enough. I don't have the credentials. I would ask like, is that true? Show me the evidence for that. And if you want to be a coach and you don't have the coach skills, you should probably go get some coach skills, go get some training and credential for that. Sure. If you want to be a doctor, like you have to go through the, the credentials, right? There are certain things that you do need to go through the steps and go get some training. And we don't want a bunch of people calling themselves coaches without some type of training and skill. However, they're the people that are typically coming to us saying that have all these credentials and trainings <laughs> and skills, and they're still believing they're not good enough. Well, the belief is what led them to get the next credential and the next skill and the next training and the next. Yes. Thing. Yes. So, you know, I love that coaching is unregulated and that you don't have to go through a huge degree to become a coach and work for yourself. I, I love that, but I also know that you do need some skills. So either sharpen your skills or sharpen your mindset. How can you believe that you are enough and have show yourself the evidence that you can help people and make money with whatever credentials that you have now, all the skills experience. That's what we love to do here. We love to package you up so that you use everything that you've done in your life to help people. You're not always searching for the next certification. Exactly. So if you're a new coach, have you heard your mind telling you some of these lies, some of these limiting beliefs? And another thing is sometimes we'll still hear those things, 
Like I'll still hear some things, but like my mind will offer that as a, as an option for me in the moment. But now I don't take action from there. I'm like, oh, that's, that's dumb. I don't believe that anymore. Right. Then reframe, redirect to what do I actually believe and what do I have evidence to support? And now I'm going to take act, take the next action step from that place. But so how do like we get reframe. to that point though? We have to take enough action and get help, get coaching, reframe our thoughts, do the mindset work like enough times repeatedly to build that muscle and that awareness to say, oh, that's just a thought. If we're not used to that process of taking action, thought comes up, handle it, taking action, thought comes up. If we're not used to that. We're thinking our thoughts are our reality and truth and fact. Truth, yeah. We're like, no, I thought this, this is for real. I'm not good enough, but you can't go from thinking that to just thinking everything is wonderful and perfect. And I'm amazing all the time. There is that process of taking the action, working through your mindset, getting coached. You know, that's why we say, if you're, if you're coaching as a business, you should be getting coached. Absolutely. Yeah. For anyone in business, for sure needs for sure coaching just take the next step every day so that's a that's huge for me like it was huge for me on a personal level and then now like now that we're working together in this business it's on a whole nother level like we're always coaching each other yeah (laughs) it doesn't Um, stop (laughs) no it never stops just like personal growth and personal development never stops it just goes up to the next level but for me for a very long time I couldn't see that the reason I wasn't making the progress was because of one of the limiting beliefs that we listed, even though I had them because they were, they were, they were subconscious. Like I wasn't aware that that was the thing that was holding me back. And that was the thing that was show it like painting the picture that I was seeing. I couldn't see that. And that's why interacting with something that we have like belief boot camp is so important because the way that Tim, that Kim teaches it is she takes you beyond like what the mind is telling you to get to that subconscious level of, oh, that's where this is coming from. So that you can see where the belief came from, how it got in embedded into your neurology. So it's not just like how it's playing out right now, but taking it back to how it got there and then cleaning that part up and painting a new picture. Exactly. So. We can't fix what we don't understand. We can't transform what we are, we're not aware of. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So if that sounds like you, if that sounds like something you're interested in, which it probably is, it definitely is. You need to come to Belief Bootcamp. We have the online version, March 9th and 10th. It's $97. We'll put the link underneath this video as soon as it's over. And... If you want to come meet us in Austin and come in person, you need to do that. That is happening when a- April 14th, April 14th. 16th yes. in Austin. Yes. Yay, so we'll put the okay. link for that one as well. Yes. Y'all, this is some of the, the most impactful work that you're going to do for yourself in your personal life and for your business, because how you do anything is how you do everything. So if it's happening in your personal life, it's happening in your business. If it's happening in your business, it's happening in your personal life. This is how you get it cleaned up. And this is how you create the reality that you do want instead of what you have that you don't want. Boom. You said it perfectly. Oh, good. I was going to ask if there's anything you wanted to add. (laughs) I would add like what was so amazing for me at the New Orleans Belief Bootcamp in person was watching the transformation like in their face when they came, they're kind of scared, nervous, like what am I getting myself into? you know, some people have been in our community and our programs and they're like, I'm ready. And then some are like, what's happening? What is she talking about? And then seeing them later in that same afternoon or the next day, they're like, whoa. And they're just wide open, ready for what they couldn't imagine before. And that is the whole point is to open your mind to something that you couldn't even see. And watching them take this little dream that they thought they wanted and then Kim helping them expand it to something even bigger and then watching them 
really believe and be so on fire for their own dream and walking out of there a new person. That was just so cool. So I'm excited to see how that plays out on the online version because I know being able to like dedicate yourself to that process for a whole day, even if you can't come to the physical in-person events, like just being able to say, I'm going to serve myself and become aware of my thoughts. I'm going to take this time for myself. That's huge. So I'm excited. Absolutely. I'd love to see you there. Yes. Yes. Okay. If y'all have questions about belief bootcamp, put them in the comments here. We'll happy to, we'll be happy to come back and answer them. And if you, if you want to know, like meet other people that are already attending, who have come to the last one in new Orleans, join us in the more than mindset Facebook group. They are in there. They are posting about their experiences from the, the new Orleans event that was in January. And they're sharing how excited they are to come to the next one in Austin. They're sharing their tickets from their email whenever they sign up. So if you need some, some new friends who are going to help you believe on a higher level, we welcome you. We invite you. Yes. Okay. Come on. All right. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.